1,500 protesters flocked to climate camp at Kings North in 2008. They were policed by almost the same number of officers from 26 forces under the leadership of Kent Police. It wasn't long before the police were being accused of overzealous, even illegal tactics, not least in allegedly abusing their powers of stop and search. Gillingham resident Trish Marchant was there. It became evident that it didn't matter what you said or what you did or how you looked, you were going to be stopped and searched. 1,500 people came and went during that week. They, there was no reason for them to suspect that they were all carrying items to cause criminal damage, which is what's written on the pink slips as a reason for the searches. So what is the law regarding stop and search? Well, police must suspect that someone's carrying a weapon or something that could cause criminal damage before they search them. And they can't simply assume that an entire group is more likely to break the law than another. But protesters say that is precisely what happened at climate camp. That police searched everyone as they came and went, amounting to three and a half thousand illegal searches. Kent police firmly denied an illegal stop and search policy, saying there was never a blanket decision to search everyone. Protesters disagree. In this footage, campaigners can be seen queuing in long lines, waiting to be searched. Until David Morris, one of the litigants in the judicial review, stepped forward. This is protected by the European Convention on Human Rights. He tells the crowd, the police have no right to search you all. That would be against the law. A moment's pause and protesters flood through the checkpoint. The police do not try to stop them, but simply look away. Could this be an indication they knew their actions had not been lawful in the first place? The police were stopping and searching practically everybody. They were seizing materials which had no possible relevance to the alleged threat to the power station, toilet rolls, board games, clown costumes and the like. Uh, I heard stories of the police circling overhead through the helicopter to keep people awake, allegedly. And I've, I saw with my own eyes the police hitting people uh, who were posing no threat, they actually had their hands in the air, hitting them with either truncheons or shields. If we don't have the right to protest in this country, then one of the fundamental rights of democracy is removed. Having searched protesters, what did police remove? Many reported having everything from pens to a clown's wig taken from them. They took my walking stick. They took um, some children's washable chalks. An ironing board. They took my soap. My friend's umbrella. My spoon. But though the police have their critics, they will have their supporters. Those who point out that some protesters, at least, had declared their intention to break into Kings North and disrupt power supplies. There will be people who would go and exercise their right to peaceful protest who would be only too happy to allow police to search them while they're trying to, to maintain peace and order. In this country, we have a right to gather together with other people for the purposes of protest um, without being impeded in any way by the police or anyone else unless there is a, a, a good enough reason for doing that. Um, there's a problem in people feeling that they have to seek the permission of uh, police officers to exercise basic democratic rights. The police uh, are required to act within their lawful powers just like everyone else. Um, if we didn't have that principle, um, we'd either be living in an anarchy or, or, or a dictatorship. During the judicial review, the mother of non-identical twins described her children crying and shaking during a stop and search the police admitted was illegal. To protect the identity of the twins, their mother has been interviewed anonymously. For my son in particular, that was very traumatic and he was in tears and he was sobbing and I learnt many months afterwards he thought he was going to prison. He had some stickers in his rucksack and he thought from the discussions that were going on in the queue about the things that the police were seizing and the arrests that were being made, he thought he was going to prison, so it was very traumatic for them both. I suppose my basic assumption is the police obey the law, and they weren't. Kings North is only one of a number of high-profile cases where police have been criticised recently.
you like, one of the kind of rights of the freeborn Englishman have always been, you know, uh, demonstration and protest. And probably the police have always regarded protest and demonstration as quasi unlawful on the boundaries of legality. What it demonstrated is that it doesn't matter how law abiding or what type of good citizen you are, if you're branded, labelled like that, you're just treated as if you are a criminal. If others now seek to sue Kent Police for unlawful stop and search at Kings North, the bill could run into millions. But is the true cost of this case a loss of public faith in those who are there to protect and serve?